The Battle of Manado took place as part of the Japanese offensive to capture the Dutch East Indies. It occurred at Manado on the Minahasa Peninsula on the northern part of Celebes Island, from 11 the 12th of January 1942. The battle was noted as the first time in Japanese history that the country had deployed paratroopers in a military operation. Chapter 1, Background Chapter 1 Section 1, Minahasa's Strategic Value Even though the Minahasa Peninsula does not contain any raw materials or strategic technical installations, its military value remained essential. The sheltered bays of Manado and Lake Tondano provide good bases for seaplanes, as Dutch forces established a naval base on the southeast side of Tondano Lake, near Tasoeka. A seaplane base was also established on the southern part of the lake, near Kakas. Aside from that, Dutch forces also constructed two airfields nearby. At the Kaloran village near Langoan, the Manado 2 Langoan airfield was established. When the war broke out, Manado I airfield, located just east of Manado City at Maypangit, was still under construction. Chapter 1 Section 2 Japanese Invasion Plan as part of the Japan's plan to conquer the Netherlands East Indies, particularly the island of Java, air support from southern Sumatra, Kuching, Banjamasin, Makassar and Kendari was required. Beforehand, however, in order to set up the aforementioned aerial support, specifically in southern Celebes and Banjamasin, relay fields in Manado, Tarakan and Balikpapan had to be conquered as well. The seizure of Manado was outlined as part of Japan's eastern offensive prong to capture the Dutch East Indies. Responsibility for conducting attacks on this prong falls to the Imperial Japanese Navy. Chapter 2 Order of Battle. Chapter 2 Section 1 Japan. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Ground Forces. Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 3 Naval Units Chapter 2 Section 2 Netherlands Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Ground Forces Chapter 3 Dutch Plans The Dutch Defence Plan for Manado consists of Defend against a coup de main by the Japanese force Putting up a stiff resistance against the enemy landing if the fight had led to the destruction of most of the troops, proceed to conduct a guerrilla fight. Defense of the Tasoeka Naval Air Base, and Langoan Airfield. Monitoring of a northern landing area west of the Iomadige Tatalo Road between May 1940 and December 1941, the Dutch forces in Manado made necessary defense preparation. These preparations consisted of establishing several monitoring services, to which two reserve corps companies were assigned to conduct these services. In addition, the Dutch also worked to construct several defensive positions. However, due to limited funding, few of these positions were completed by the time the Pacific War broke out. By the 8th of December 1941, Schilmoller arranged his troops to be stationed in these positions. Combined Force of Compagnie Monado, Stadeswatt Monado, and Landstorm Compagnie, one machine gun section and one 75mm field gun based in Monado. If the force failed to defend against the enemy landing on the beach, they must delay their advance from Monado to Tamohan via the defense preparations in Tinor and Kakaskarsen. A brigade of Radamas A Company stationed at Iomadige, with another two brigades stationed at Kema. A mobile column of six trucks mounted with the three 37mm guns and four RK brigades in Posso Station to defend Lake Tondano. An RK brigade at Tasoeka Naval Base. An RK brigade, command of the defense of Lake Tondano and Langoan Airfield stationed at Kakas Seaplane Base. Three RK brigade and an overval wagon at Langoan Airfield. A section of the KV Company stationed in Kakas stationed as reserve. KV Company stationed in Lango and as reserve. Staff of Shilmoller's command with an RK company based in Tomohan for the defense of Lango and Airfield and Kakas seaplane base, Shilmoller established the tactical command Kakas, under the command of Captain W. C. Van Den Berg. 
Van den Berg had the available forces at his disposal. Command post at Kakas. Airfield defense by Reserve Corp D Company under 1st. Lieutenant J. B. Wheelinger. 1,5 Brigade of C Company as Reserve under Wheelinger, stationed at his command post in Langoan Village. 3,5 Brigades of C Company and the Overvalwagen, were stationed at Langoan Airfield under Sergeant Major H. J. Robermond. Seaplane Base Defense by 6 Brigades of Reserve Corps C Company under 1st. Lieutenant H. Futa, supported by the Mobile Colon. Two overvalwagons under of Sergeant Major A.J. Turv were placed as reserve in Kakas finally, to accommodate the guerrilla plan, nine underground warehouses were built to store supplies that will be needed during the action. Remaining Dutch troops will be divided into six sections, where each were assigned to a specific warehouse. The sections are Compagnie Monado with European Militia KV Company with E Company RK a Company RK B Company RK C Company RK D Company RK Chapter 4, Japanese Plans The Eastern Attack Unit was assigned as the Japanese fleet tasked with capturing Monado. Even though Rear Admiral Takeo Takagi commanded this force, he left the operation details to Rear Admiral Raizo Tanaka. The battle plan intends for the Sasebo Combined Landing Force, as well as the Yokosuka 1st Special Naval Landing Force as a paratrooper unit. Chapter 4 Section 1, Sasebo Combined Special Landing Force The Sasebo Combined Special Landing Force's mission for the upcoming battle consisted of Landing at both at both coasts on the north and south of Manado, envelop the Dutch forces in the town and destroy them, after which they shall leave Manado and advance towards the Kaka's base via Tamohan. Landing at Kema and advance towards Tondano Lake in Kaka's airfield via Iomadij. Together with the 1st Yokosuka Special Landing Force, which shall drop on the airfield, make a pincer attack on the Dutch forces in the airfield from the east and the west. After destroying the Dutch forces in these areas, they shall reassemble in Manado, and prepare for the coming operation to seize Kendari the Sasebo force will depart Davao on the 9th of January, and the land in the early hours of the 11th. Chapter 4 Section 2, 1st Yokosuka Special Naval Landing Force The 1st Yokosuka SNLF, in conjunction with the Sasebo force, will carry out a paradrop operation on the enemy airfield at 9.30 am on the 11th of January with the support of the fighters of the 1st Air Raid Unit. Their objectives are to seize Langoan Airfield, and the Kakas Seaplane Base, two facilities that will support subsequent Japanese operations for the Dutch East Indies campaign. The distribution of tasks and actions of each unit, are ah. The Mitsubishi Gem Transport aircraft of the 1st Yokosuka SNLF would fly with an interval of 1,500 meters between each company. Carrying 12 paras and 7 cargo containers each, 10 planes will carry the first drop group, while 8 will carry the second group. The drops would occur at an altitude of 500 feet and at a speed of 100 knots. Chapter 5 The Battle Chapter 5 Section 1, Landing on Manado Following the sighting of Japanese transport ships on 10 January, Shilmola immediately garrisoned the troops in their quarters as planned. He also ordered Captain Crone's combined force to occupy the Manado coastlines and guard it against possible landings. On Crone's left flank, in the Sario district, he placed Maslink's European militia, while Lieutenant Demands stays what dig in on the right. Engineers are placed on standby, waiting for the order to destroy vital installations, NCOs and members of local government were also informed of the looming Japanese landing. Mori's first Sasebo force landed on the northern and southern coast of Manado at 4 a.m. on the 11th of January. Upon hearing reports about the landing, Crone's company Manado immediately withdrew to the rear positions at Pineleng and Tinor without knowing what is happening on the beach, as Maury's troops overrun the 75mm gun that was firing at the landing boats. 
yet they also ran into stout opposition from Maslink's militias, forcing them to bring all their automatic fire to bear. Japanese pressure forced Maslink to withdraw to Pineleng, only to find that the first force had bypassed them into the town at five o'clock, pressing him to move further southward. When Crone's troops arrived half an hour later, Mori's troops forced him to withdraw southward along the Manado to Mohan Road to Rurikan. When Maslink reported his positions to Shilmola, he ordered him occupy the bridge at Pineleng instead, even though Japanese troops had already occupied it. Maslink eventually continued the retreat, reaching Tinor by seven o'clock. After battling the combined force, Mori's first force occupied Manado by 8.30. As reports of the landing began to come in, Shilmola sent five RK brigades under Lieutenant Van de Laar into Mohan to Tinor to support the retreating combined force. Immediately after capturing Manado, Mori advanced southward to Tamohan at 9.45, bypassing the Dutch line of retreat. Soon, Chilmola pulled three brigades from Van der Laar's force back to Tamohan to reinforce the town against a false intelligence about Japanese landing in Tanavanko, further west of Manado. Despite this withdrawal, Van der Laar was reinforced by stragglers from Compagnie Manado and an Overvalwagen as well as Stades Watt troops under Lieutenant de Man. To provide protection against Japanese tanks, Dutch troops swiftly cut down a heavy tree that will fall on the road the moment the tanks came. As Maury's vanguard of four Type 95 tanks approached the town at 10.30, the falling tree and concentrated machine gun fire knocked out three of them and repel Maury's troops. Van der Laar's troops hold on to Tinor until about noon, when the shortage of ammunition forced them back to Kakaskarsen. Now supported by overvalwagons, Van der Laar set up a new defensive position just north of Kakaskarsen. First force engaged them again at 1600 hours, but Dutch troops managed to stem their advance and caused substantial casualties before retreating again. Yet, since Mori continues to bypass them, once the Dutch arrived in Tamohan, they found themselves immediately fighting the first forces. The combined force attempted a defense against the Japanese advance, but they could not stop Mori from seizing Tamohan by 1930. Van der Laar's troops moved eastwards to Rurikan, arriving at 2200 hours. By morning of the 12th, Mori advanced to Langoan airfield by way of Tamohan to Kawankoan. By 12.30, his troops established contact with the first Yokosuka Paras and arrived at Langoan, and Kakas at 1400 hours. Dutch forces had, by then, retreated to Amirang further west, while blowing up bridges and warehouses, making no attempts of counter-attack in the meantime. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Landing on Kema Lieutenant Radamer's A Company, tasked with defending the eastern coast, was spread in the road between the coastal city of Kema and Ayamadij. In addition to the brigades at both aforementioned cities, three brigades were stationed at Maypanjit airfield, and one brigade each was stationed in Lykirpang and Baitoeng, further north from Kema. Radama also constructed machine gun casemates and tank barricades along the road from Kema to Ayamadij. At the same time with the first force landing, Commander Yoroku Hashimoto's 2nd Sasebo force landed at Kema on the east at 4.20 and engaged Radama's two brigades. When notified about the landing, Radama ordered the dispersed A company to gather at Ayamadij, but only the troops from Lykirpang eventually came. Meanwhile at Kema, the two brigade under Sergeant Sernda retreated after destroying the town bridge, Hashimoto spared no time continued to advance to Ayamadij. Near Kassar the brigades clashed with the second force and had to withdraw again after inflicting modest casualties. By nine o'clock, the second force, supported by three Type 95 tanks, advanced to the east of Ayamadij and engaged Radama's company, now reinforced with its remaining brigades. Even though Radama's troops managed to cause considerable casualties, Japanese tanks eventually broke through and threatened to outflank the Dutch defense, forcing Radama to retreat by 1400 hours. To cover their withdrawal, Sergeant Romambi and Private Inire and Poizoin continued to fire from their casemate until it was destroyed by tank shells. Another cover force of a brigade under Sergeant Cigar hold Hashimoto's troops at Soangan to allow Radama safe passage to Tondano. 
After driving Cigar's brigade back through force majeure and airplane attacks, an element of the second force reached Hondano by 1800 hours, and by 2200 hours, Hashimoto had reached the town and halted there for the night. By morning on the 12th, Hashimoto went along the road the eastern and western shores of Lake Tondano, linking up with the first Yokosuka Paras by 11 o'clock and the first Sasebo force at 12.30. By the night of the 11th, however, Shilmola had decided to withdraw to the west and commenced a guerrilla fight. Radama left with about 12 troops to the warehouse allocated for his company, but soldiers began to desert along the way. When he arrived of the shelter, it had already been looted by the local population, forcing him to try to infiltrate Iomadij to gather what is left of his forces. The rest of his troops eventually abandoned him as well during the journey. The high rate of desertion was exacerbated by the fact that the Japanese have taken hold all major cities and towns, and therefore women and children, within 24 hours. In addition, Japanese forces also dropped out pamphlets that read, The war is not going on against you, only against the Dutch. So be sensible, don't interfere and go home. Chapter 5 Section 3, Airborne Drop On the night of 10 to 11 January, the Kakas command post was alerted by Tomohan, compelling Van Den Berg to send motorcycle messengers to place his troops on high alert. When Tomohan informed him again at 5 o'clock of the Japanese landing in Manado and Kema, a brigade from the reserve KV section at Kakas moved to Paparkilan to close the roads leading to Tondano. Concurrently, at 6.30 a.m. on 11th of January, 28 Mitsubishi Gem left Davao for Manado, carrying the first drop group with them. While the flight approached northern Celebes, a group of Mitsubishi F-1 MP that was covering the naval invasion force mistakenly attacked them, shooting down a gem and killing all 12 paras aboard. To prevent further friendly fire incident, Mitsubishi Zero fighters from the carrier Zuiho escorted the flight, until it reached the drop zone. In due course, the first group began dropping over Langoan at 9.52 and completed the drop by 10.20. Van den Berg immediately ordered the rest of the reserve KV section to take position west of Kakas to defend against another possible landing. He wanted to call in the reserve KV section in Langoan as well but Schilmoller had already used them. Roberman's troops, though lacking in anti-aircraft guns, used their Vickers and Madsen machine guns to open fire into the paras and repel the oncoming assault. Several paras were dropped close to Dutch pillboxes, and they had to destroy them with pistols and hand grenades, while giving time for the rest of the group to gather weapons from the cargo container. Upon retrieving their weapons, Hariuchi focused the attack against Roberman's troops on the northern side of the airfield. By 10.50, the Paras had enveloped the northern side, capturing the Overval wagon with it. Schilmola then put in the reserve KV company section in Kakas into the battle. The company was ordered to advance to Telian and reinforce Van Den Berg's troops at the airfield. However the order was not carried out, as the unit disappeared with no further notification. Van den Berg then ordered the two overval wagons on reserve under Tervoort to attack the airfield. Entering the vicinity of Langoan under heavy fire, one overval wagon had its engine shot off. Its gunners, Private Tauron and Private Tomidi kept firing their machine guns to provide cover for rest of the crew, before retreating in the face of the advancing paras. The second one, under Sergeant Bojo, entered the airfield and took part in the battle before eventually withdrawing. In spite of the dogged resistance, the first drop group overran the airfield by 11.25. As the battle progresses, Van Den Berg called Lieutenant Futa's company, along with the mobile column to attack the paras from a westerly direction, via Panason. Yet Futa did not arrive at Kakas until 11.30, where by then Lango and airfield, had already been lost, thus cancelling the attack. Van den Berg then ordered Futa's company and the mobile column to take position to the south and west of Kakas and relieve the militia landstorm company stationed there. Upon accessing the number of casualties sustained and the very few troops that were still able to fight, 
Van Denberg's troops destroyed the Tassoeca naval base and prepare his troops to move into their assigned guerrilla territory. At 1235, Van Denberg informed Tomohan that he was leaving for the area east of Tassoeca. He sent the militia land storm company, deemed unfit for a guerrilla fight, westwards to Cotamabago to join forces with the Manado militia company. Lieutenant Wheelinger, the overall commander of the airfield defense, did not use his brigade to support the battle, and had already retreated during the battle instead. Upon capturing the airfield, Hariuchi sent a reconnaissance team moved to the Kakas area 1300 hours to reconnoitre Dutch movement. Tervoort, Tauren, and Tomidi, who just reached Kakas on foot, immediately reported the movement. The team encountered and captured an overvalwagen before moving into Kakas, where they engaged another overvalwagen and forced it to withdraw. First and second company, advancing towards Kakas, engaged with Futa's company, which was supported by an overvalwagen. After an extensive fight, the Paras drove Futa's troops off and seized Kakas by 1450. At 1550 the Paras attacked the seaplane base and captured it by 1800 hours. The attack was supported by the Tondano Lake unit, who landed by two Mavis flying boats on Tondano Lake at 1457. While landing, the unit came under fire from Mobile Column's 37mm guns, which was not sufficient to halt the process. The following day, the second drop group parachuted into Langoan Airfield at 9.52 am and linked up with the first drop group. Hariuchi's force, in full capacity, launched an assault on Langoan City and the neighboring Tumpaso. By then, Shilmola had withdrawn westward, towards Amirang leaving behind large amounts of weapon and ammunition. Langoan was captured by 1125, with Tumpaso following suit at 1230. Another element of the Paras advanced to Paso and seized the city at 1035. By 1400 hours, Hariuchi managed to link up with both 1st and 2nd Sasebo force. Chapter 6, Aftermath From 13 January, the Sasebo Combined Special Landing Force conducted a mopping up operation of Manado and its vicinity. They completed the operation on the 16th, and assembled in Manado to start preparations for the capture of Kendari. The 1st Yokosuka SNLF, on the other hand, continued to be stationed at the Langoan airfield until 24 April, when they were assigned in small groups to attack nearby islands on landing crafts. The force reassembled at Makassar in November 1942 to be transported back to Japan. Chapter 6, Section 1, Casualties Japanese casualties from the battle are as follows. 1st Yokosuka Special Naval Landing Force, 32 killed, CA. 90 wounded. Sasebo Combined Special Landing Force, 12 killed. 154 wounded 140 Dutch troops were killed in the battle, with another 48 captured. The Japanese also captured 10 8mm field guns and a significant number of machine guns, rifles, and other supplies. Chapter 6, Section 2, Reprisals In retaliation for the high number of casualties, Hariuchi's paras executed Dutch powers defending the airfield. Lieutenant Wheelinger was captured in Gorontalo and taken to Langoan, where he was beheaded on the 1st of March. In addition, the Paras also beheaded or bayoneted, Sergeant Robermond, Sergeant Bivisha, Private Tomidi, and nine Manadanese soldiers. Another two Manadanese soldiers died from torture in captivity. Chapter 7, The Guerrilla War On the night of the 11th of January in Rerican, when the Dutch decided to commence their guerrilla war, Skilmola gave money to three of his commanders, Captains Krohn and Abink and Lieutenant van der Laar, and ordered them to begin the guerrilla fighting in their respective regions. Minahasa's geography of open terrain, however, makes it difficult to stage a guerrilla fighting. Furthermore, some of the underground warehouses had already been looted by the local population, which adds to the crucial question of supplying the troops. Chapter 7 Section 1, Skilmola's Group 
Skillmoller himself planned to set up his base in Lake Tondano and established contact with any unlocated units from there. With three brigades from Arkesby Company, he moved to the area between Lake Tondano and the Lembine Mountains. Yet when his only radio broke down, Skillmoller marched his group westwards to Cotamabago, where the Manadanese Militia Company was located, to establish communication with NIL headquarter based in Java. On 20 January, his group made contact with Captain Van Den Berg's group just southeast of Lake Tondano. The latter suggested that he left B Company behind and take the elderly and the physically weak to Cotamabago. Instead, Skillmoller, kept B Company and reinforced it with Captain Van Den Berg's best troops stop the next day, the former's group left for Pasolo on the east coast, where from there they will steam south as far as possible. When the group reached Pasolo, however, the insufficient amount of water transport means that they could not depart in one go. Half of the group, including Sergeant Chief of Staff J.F. Flips, were left under the command of First Lieutenant Siegmund, and will be picked up later. But before it could happen, the Japanese overran and captured the group. After being subjected to extensive torture, Siegmund and Flips were executed in Lango and on 27 January. Schilmoller arrived in Cotamabago on 26 January, where he was able to re-establish radio communication and reported his conditions to the Dutch general headquarters in Java. On 31 January, the headquarters ordered Schilmoller to make his way to Makassar, where from there he will be transported back to Java. Under pressure from Japanese propaganda which could spark local uprising, Schilmoller decided to bring his group to Posso, in central Celebes. However, the Dutch were not able to acquire sea transport until 26 February, at which point Makassar had already fallen into Japanese hands for over two weeks. With few options remaining, Schilmoller decided to continue to wage guerrilla warfare in central Celebes, bolstering his group with Dutch detachments from Posso, Palo and Kerndale. First to join was Lieutenant Willem van Dollen and his 60 troops, and other two detachments joined in from Posso, one under the command of Lieutenant Johannes de Jong. Despite the increasing number, most of the troops are lightly armed, and some of them have no training at all. Furthermore, there's also the consideration that the local population could not be expected to provide support in continuing the fight. Eventually, when he heard the news of Dutch surrender at Java on the 8th of March, Schilmoller decided to capitulate. Chapter 7 Section 2 Krohn's Group On the 12th of January, Captain Krohn and the remainder 50 troops his company left Rorikan, and headed northward to Kems. The high rate of desertion by Manadanese soldiers left Krohn with only nine men, when Japanese troops captured his group and take them to Kems, before eventually transporting them to Manado. On 26 January, a day after they arrived, all European soldiers, except Captain Krohn, were executed. Those executed included four NCOs and two militia landstorm soldiers. Chapter 7 Section 3 Abink Maslink's group. Captain Abink's group headed southwest to start their guerrilla fighting in the Amirang area, yet the similar wave of desertion left him with only four soldiers. Hoping to connect with other guerrilla forces, Abink traveled from 17 January to the 1st of February, when his group met with eight RK soldiers under Lieutenant Maslink at northeast of Amirang. After the battle in Tinor, Maslink and Sergeant Siwi arrived in Kakaskarsan and attempted to reach the command post in Tamohan. Yet when they heard that Japanese troops had occupied the city, their guerrilla warfare had already begun. On 13 or 14 January Maslink's group met up with 27 former soldiers who had retreated from Tarnavanko. As they began preparing for the guerrilla fighting, the high desertion rate had shrunk Maslink's group to five troops. The Abink, Maslink group soon learned of the Dutch forces surrender in Manado and lost contact with Schilmoller's group. These factors led them to leave for the safety of Cotamabago, where they raided supplies and arms from the local police. After arriving at the Manado Militia Company barracks on 9 February, they left for Posso in central Celebes. Chapter 7 Section 4, Maliza's Group 
On the 11th of January, Sergeant Johann Melisa's E detachment was stationed at Amirang when it came under fire from Japanese ships, killing one and injuring three. Having lost contact with Tomohan, Melisa sent a motorcycle messenger to Major Skillmoller, who ordered the detachment to reinforce the troops at Lango and Airfield. Making the advance under constant fear of air raid, E Detachment's 20 troops arrived at the airfield on 12 January, only to find that Japanese troops already occupied it. E Detachment's troops immediately dispersed and returned home, with many feared to take up arms again for the guerrilla fighting. Nevertheless, Meliza refused to capitulate and began organizing a guerrilla group of approximately 15 troops in the second half of January. The group is also joined by civilians, among them Mrs. Hoffman, the spouse of a retired MWO knight who was executed for aiding Dutch guerrilla troops. On 8 February, the group repulsed a day-long Japanese attack at Kanjan, just east of Tompan. In reprisal for their loss at Kanjan, Japanese troops burned down a kampong and beheaded five civilians, including two women. In another battle just four days later, they captured Malisa's group and brought them to Langoan. After a short time in captivity, Malisa was beheaded in Langoan on 20 February, along with twelve other members of his group, among them Mrs. Hoffman. Chapter 7 Section 5, Van Den Berg's Group From Tassoeka, Captain Van Den Berg's group make camp on the slopes of the Lembine Mountains on the night of the 11th of January. A steady stream of troops joining in turns his group into a 101 strong force just three days later. Van den Berg divided them into four brigades of 22 soldiers each, along with a staff group of 13 troops and nurses. Two of the brigades were commanded by Futa, while Sergeant Major Ranti commanded the other two and Tervoort commanded the staff group. Got on the 17th of January in Kara, naval personnels from Kema under the command of 2nd Lieutenant W. A. De Reiter, joined the group. Three days later, they met with Skillmoller's group, just north of Keijo Watto. As mentioned, Skillmoller deprived the group of most of its fighting force, leaving Van Den Berg with just 23 troops left that will gather other dispersed troops in the region, thus diminishing the capacity to wage guerrilla in Minahasa. During the encounter with Skillmoller, Futa's brigades have been on patrol for five days, when they encountered a Japanese motorcade in a chaotic nighttime fighting that left Futa with just ten soldiers at its conclusion. By the night of the 22nd of January, Japanese troops raided his barracks at Kombi and captured his entire group. Ranti's brigades, who was deployed to the southeastern side of Lake Tondano on 15 January, returned from the patrol on 20 January. Half of them, however, decided to continue the guerrilla in Kaweng. On 4 on February, the group at Kaweng fought off a Japanese attack that killed three of their soldiers, for the unconfirmed loss of 37 Japanese troops. Meanwhile, Van Den Berg's group, amounting to just one brigade, continues to maintain itself in Lembine Mountains for the time being and carried out demolition works. The group also continued to gather any soldier in an attempt to carry out a large-scale raid on Langone Airfield or Tondano Dot before this endeavor could be conducted, 60 to 80 Japanese troops, aided by the local population, encircled Van Den Berg's base just southwest of Kassar on 17 February. Realizing that a daylight outbreak could not be successful, the group attempted to escape from the barracks at night. One by one and under cover of darkness, soldiers from the group left the barracks, with Captain Van Den Berg being the last person to leave. Despite the success of the escape, the involvement of the local population on the Japanese side meant that the situation for the group was becoming more untenable. By the 20th of February, leaving the sick and elderly behind, the group moved to the mouth of Kali Rakar, where they began the trek south along the coast using wooden boats. After rowing for 14 hours, the brigade reached Pasir Poetai, CE. 80 kilometers south of Kali Rakar. A local fisherman quickly notified their presence to the Japanese, who swiftly surrounded the coast. The group managed to flee once more, but was captured on the 22nd of February, a day after they had come ashore. Admiring their persistent resistance and heroic stand, 
the Japanese War Council in Langon spared Van Den Berg's group from execution. After the war, Van Den Berg was made Knight Commander of the Militaire Williams Ord, 4th Class. Chapter 7 Section 6, De Jong and Van Dollen's Group On the 12th of March, Shilmola sent one of his officers to Manado to discuss the terms of surrender with the Japanese. He had hoped that his troops would be allowed to keep their weapons, to maintain order and protect the European civil servants and families that have been traveling along with the group. Instead, the Japanese demanded that the Dutch surrender all their weapons and for all members of the group to make their way to Manado. Shilmola left the group for Manado on the 23rd of March, while a detachment of 50 Japanese soldiers was sent to Poso to bring his group back to Manado. De Jong and Van Dollen, however, rejected the demand to surrender their weapons and turned back on their decision to capitulate. When the Japanese detachment arrived in April, the Dutch opened fire at them, killing the detachment commander and wounding others. In May, the Japanese sent a 400 strong unit to engage the Dutch guerrilla force of 125 soldiers who withdrew and continued their fight inland. De Jong and Van Dollen created two groups and based themselves each in the east of Posso and around Kerndale respectively. On 9 to 10 June, De Jong's group came upon a national administration's radio station in Kerndale and established contact with Dutch representatives in Australia, requesting food, weapons and ammunition. Unbeknownst to them, Japanese forces managed to intercept the radio communication. Responding to the newly established contact, a party was created in Australia, whose task is to infiltrate Celebes and came back with intelligence or conduct sabotage operation. Named Lion, the party consisted of engineer Robert Heese, telegraphist Bernard Baloney and marine engineer Hans Brandon. Lion party left the port on the boat Samoa on 24 June and landed in Woto, south of Kerndale, after a 1,700-kilometer journey. Local population immediately reported their presence to the Japanese, who captured all three after a firefight on 12-13 July. After a period of captivity and torture, the Japanese beheaded them in Makassar on 14 September. Even as the Japanese continue to add pressure on both guerrilla groups, in conjunction with increasing desertion and casualties, both groups continued to exert casualties on the Japanese force. Before July, the group had killed around 100 Japanese soldiers, at a loss of three killed and four captured. On 7 July, De Jong's troops attacked Japanese forces in Salander. The Japanese came in three vehicles and were equipped with automatic weapons and mortars. A heavy firefight ensued until 2100 hours on the 7th, and continued again to 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock the next day. At the end of it, seven Japanese officers and between 35 to 70 Japanese soldiers had been killed. Witnesses stated that all three vehicles were strewn with Japanese bodies, which were then burned with gasoline. It was not until 15 July for the supplies to be delivered from Australia. At that point, the Japanese had already landed at Kerndale, destroyed the radio station and captured the supply drops. At the same time, local residents had been recruited to aid the search for the Dutch guerrillas. The Japanese finally captured De Jong and Van Dollen on 9 August 1942. Both officers were imprisoned at Kerndale, before transferred to Manado. After extended interrogation and torture, De Jong and Van Dollen were beheaded on 25 August. Along with them, the Japanese also beheaded 15 soldiers, from the guerrilla group. Earlier on 13 August, Nine soldiers had also been executed. Hegener argued De Jong and Van Dollen's guerrilla actions had been quite effective due to Minahasa's natural suitability, and the Japanese's lack of experience in dealing with guerrilla warfare. The group had initial hit and run successes, but as the local population's support for the Japanese grew and more troops were being allocated to fight them, the effectiveness of the guerrilla war eventually dwindled away. After the war, De Jong was made Knight Commander of the Militaire Williams Ord, 4th Class and Van Dollen received the Bronze Lion, both posthumously. Chapter 7 Section 7, Liberation 
Monado remained under Japanese occupation until October 1945, when the Australian-composed Monado force liberated the region.